Hello and welcome to the studio. I make no apologies for the mess this week because I'm in the process of moving. So in this video, I thought we'd have a last look around my studio here and check out some of the ideas that we put in here that have really worked for the studio space and some that haven't. So if we start on a positive, um, I have these built-in benches that Mr. B built and one of the really smart moves was to line the bench, uh, the top of the bench with vinyl flooring. So this is a, a very thin, cheap vinyl floor cover and it's it works an absolute treat for protecting the top of the table, but it's also very slight, although it's smooth, it's got a very slight texture, which means that things on it don't slide about. So a good, cheap, indestructible surface. And I also have another bit of offcut of vinyl that I use as a sort of extra protection when I need it. So vinyl flooring on the countertops was really good. Underneath the countertops, Ben's built me these lovely wide shelves, um, again, for storage. But I wish in retrospect that we'd been able to afford at the time to have made them pull out drawers. Um, it's not that I need a front on them, it's being able to access stuff at the back and I could have used the space a bit more logically and comfortably if we'd had them um, able to pull out. So while we stay down low, um, let's have a look at the flooring. Again, we did this, these cheap floor tiles um, and we did them in preference to, to a sheet of vinyl flooring and I wish we hadn't because they have lifted in places and shunting the desk and machinery and stuff about, we've damaged them. So vinyl would have been better. But one thing that seems very simple and has actually been wonderfully useful is just to nail a strip of wood onto that floor. And that has given me an area where I can store wood blocks and prop things behind um, that plank and it's been a really good storage measure. It's also been quite good um, in open studio events and things because I can clear that space out and put other things in there for display and stuff. So uh, just a simple plank on the floor has been excellent. And this table when it was originally um, built, I had, well, it was actually a different table. I had a table in here and that was fine. And I used to drag it around when I needed it. And then um, Ben built me a new one, again, topped with vinyl flooring material. But this time he put wheels on it. And just having a big table on wheels that I can move around the studio as I want has been fantastic. And that's definitely something I would always want in a studio now as a, a mobile table. So that's been really, really helpful. One of the bonuses of Ben building me the studio is we've had these beams and that's allowed us to have this very simple stringing system here, which is just picture cord and bulldog clips. And as you can see, I have my last prints in the studio hanging up there to dry. And it's a very efficient way of um, hanging prints. And to look over on this side, and I'm sure you've seen it before, but having this amazing hanging rack for rollers, um, my teaching rollers as well as my personal rollers has been fantastic and ensures that they're uh, stored without any danger of them getting squished. So we don't have beams in the new place. We'll have to think of something, some way of um, fixing these, but that's, that's been really, really helpful too. Then if we go down to my inking um, station, which is an old shower door, um, the, the big tip with this is if you're using a large gle uh, glass sheet to ink up on, I have put a pad of, um, it's that padded tablecloth stuff that you get in restaurants sometimes. So it's, it's plastic coated on one side and then it's got this kind of white foam on the back of it and because it's white foam obviously it's great because I've put it foam side up so I can see what colors I'm mixing but at the same time it just acts as a kind of level and keeps everything the glass firm and it doesn't it means the glass isn't rocking at all there's no danger of it breaking 
So that's that's something. Um, I'm sure the removal man will, will be thrilled with having to move that, but you know. Um, then if we come up to this end of the studio, I just wanted to talk briefly about picture storage. So my stock of framed work is stored in these bays. So they are standing on top of um, battens so that there's airflow. And also to keep the airflow going, um, I've used cloth strips here. This is an old duvet cover that I had. Um, and that works really, really well for keeping them clean. And But I got it wrong because I put wooden strips in to keep the... Um, the, the fabric weighed down and that turned out to be a real mistake because they are trip hazards so next time around I will certainly be using cloth but I would put um, those lead flexible lead dress weight strips in there so like they come they look like um, sort of little lead beads beads on a string to weigh them down because they definitely need something to weigh them down and keep them in place but don't make it a board because that's a bit dangerous and um, moving on to my storage area, which I'm, I'm panicking about leaving because I love it so much. Um, ben built this for me. Prior to having this, I had all my teaching stuff um, piled up in crates, which was fine, but then it was shuffling everything when I taught. So we now have these shelves. And then once he'd built those shelves, I wanted to open my studio again to visitors. So we put these great big doors on the front of them. And then that serves as a hanging space for exhibitions and things. If you are going to do that, do make sure that you have very sturdy hinges and um, a really powerful, we used a magnetic um, clip thing. So all the stuff in the studio here has been done on a budget. So there's nothing very fancy going on. We tend to look to industrial use uh, parts when we're doing this kind of thing rather than anything sort of fancier than that. So there's a lot of industrial stuff in here. And I guess sort of to wrap up, um, oh yeah, have a look at this. This is Ben's photography station. Um, which is because he we do a lot of YouTube filming, he had to have space for his equipment. So he built this rather lovely little mobile tray in our new studio space. Um, he's going to have a dedicated space for storing photography. So um, I'm not sure what will happen to this, but I'm sure it will come in very useful. And then um, last of all, the lighting in here, which I've talked about before, but it's worth repeating. We went industrial for that and we simply used warehouse lighting that I think we got on eBay and um, it was it was very reasonable and powerful. And I, I won't give you a link to it because, to be honest, every time you go and look for it, it's changed slightly. But I think these came from China and um, they've been very, very effective. They're LED lights. And um, one of the things we checked for is that they didn't flicker when we were filming. So that's something to bear in mind if you are um, buying lights for yourself. So I think that's about it. The other thing is plenty of um, sockets in the studio. So lots of electricity uh, supply on demand. And of course, my beloved cupboard with its, its little hanging uh, bulldog clips for attaching my inks to. That will be coming with me, I'm really pleased to say, because I'm very fond of that little cupboard. So I think that wraps it up for now. Um, we will be keeping you up to date with our move into the new studio and my new teaching space. And I hope you'll join us for that. If you enjoy my films, please do subscribe to the channel and please do like the hit the like button if you've enjoyed this video, because that really helps us. And I will see you soon.